So we're going. Well, thank you very much for coming in today. Mm -hmm. And first of all, you have, um, excuse me, you have, um, you fill out your paperwork in front and stuff, and I'd like to kind of go over the um, uh, confidentiality agreement. Um, everything you say in here will be confidential, mm -hmm. except if you, if any one of you is homicidal or homeless, you know, uh, homicidal or suicidal, mm -hmm. um, if you uh, make reference to ongoing child abuse, elderly abuse, uh, then that would void our uh, confidentiality agreement, and as a mandated reporter, I would be forced to uh, report that. Is everybody understanding that? So what you're telling me is that you're an agent of the government. No, but the government makes me uh, responsible and to tell something when we are in a confidential agreement. They do not like, you know, my ability to withhold that, even though in the larger scheme of it, there are a lot of things that can be withheld, even if it were to violate that, but it is in my discretion. Hmm. And I'm telling you right now that if you are homicidal or, or suicidal, and you make, you make uh, and you're aware of child abuse or elderly abuse or the abuse of disabled people, that I will report it. So that, Okay. I guess I am, in a way, an agent of the government. <laughs> Joe? That makes sense. <laughs> okay. So, what brings you in today? My wife doesn't believe that this whole corona thing is a conspiracy. It's clearly, clearly a government plot mm -hmm. to take our freedoms, okay, and enslave the people. Yeah. Oh. All right, yes. Put a chip in our hand, yeah. Make us dependent. Oh, yeah. Communism, socialism. <laughs> she agrees, okay? She's wrong. They've, so kind of, they've kind of ganged up on me because I, I do take it seriously and I'm concerned about the health of you know people around me and I feel ganged up on a lot. Just, you know, I don't, I'm not able to like really voice my opinion a whole lot because they have an answer for everything. Well, people aren't dying. They're just being whisked away to camps. And they're going to come back after the government has taken away all of our freedoms. And anyone who has already died, they're labeling it as COVID, right. even if it's not. Yeah, like a heart attack or ca cancer, you know, right? Right. Yeah, right? And how are you getting your information that that's Google. happening? And I have, I, have secret, I have secret sources inside the government, shadow organizations that tell me. I can't really get into it. But it's true. Really? Yes. So is there any substance abuse going on here? Any cannabis use going on here? Well, I mean, you know, I got to smoke my joint every day. And I like to pop a few beers, you know. The only drug I'm on is called truth. I'm <laughs> 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 sorry. I love him. <laughs> So according to you, it's, you know, the quarantine is for not? According to fact, not me, a fact. According to fact? Yeah, the rulers of this world. Is there the anything that could, you know, if you've seen that happen, um, that you would change your viewpoint? No, look at all the National Guard mobilizing. Look at FEMA camps popping up everywhere. Just a step away from them herding us up like cattle and putting us in camps. Look what they did in World War II to the Japanese. Look at what the people did all over the world with the Holocaust. It's going to happen. Just watch. I'm a little bit worried because this has basically taken over their lives. It's like we can't have normal conversations anymore. It's all conspiracy theories. And, you know, I just want to be able to have a conversation about what's going on in my life and what's going on in their lives, but um, it doesn't seem like that's on their radar anymore. It's, you know, they're just gung-ho on the conspiracy or the truth. 
Because it's government propaganda. The government propaganda is causing her to want to think about everything else that's clearly in front of her that's a threat. So she, they are smoke and mirrors, and she's buying into it by wanting to discuss everything else except for the elephant in the room. So, I mean, this has got to create a lot of stress and anxiety for you. And Just because she wants you the truth, absolutely. But she does, so I don't feel alone. Yeah, look, Deborah. Joe and I, we grew up on the truth. That's how our dad raised yeah. us, to find out the truth. Yeah. And that's what we do. This is not against you. This is just this is what we, we know. I'm trying to red pill you. I'm trying to wake you up. Even if it is the truth, though, like it's running your lives. It's not right. what I want to talk about. Yeah, is there any way that you could take a certain amount of time you know, um, to actually separate this issue and actually have, you know, conversations about other things, you know, like you're going to school, um, you know, you have your grandchildren, you know, that you live for according to your paperwork, mm -hmm. and you have your construction company. I mean, I'd be willing to hear other things, but she's so dismissive whenever we bring things up. Mm -hmm. So if she didn't just dismiss our concerns and the reality of what's happening, and she would engage us on a real level instead of mocking us or calling us crazy, I think, at least I, I can't speak for her, I'd be more open to hearing something else. But when I feel that she's buying into the lie, I mean, I love her, she's my wife. I don't want her to be deceived. I don't want her to be tricked taken advantage of, you know, her, her organs harvested. I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I mean, <laughs> organs harvested, I, I, that's not even on my radar right now. Like, I'm still living life. I'm still going to school and trying to figure out how to, you know, keep my sanity. And when they're bringing up all of this other drama, it gives me anxiety. And I, I, I just, I, I guess when I'm making fun of or like shutting you down, I, it's because I can't hear it anymore. And I feel so anxious about all of the things going on right now. I don't, I don't want to hear any more. I think for me, the reason why I think um, I bring it up so often, well, I mean, we talk about it a lot. We live right next to each other, you know, but also because, you know, my niece and nephew, I don't feel like you're properly giving them the right education and you're steering them to believe like what the government wants you to believe and so that's that's why I think I bring it up to you so much but I would be yeah. willing to not uh, talk about it as often if you'd also be willing to you know educate the kids and you have to think, too, that, I mean, with the stimulus package that just came out, we're just a stone throw away from being a socialist, communist country. And look at what the other communist countries do. China enslaves millions of Muslims, uh, Chinese Muslims, and harvests their organs. So it's not that far-fetched to think that we won't do that here in America. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no. I'm sure you're not saying that he's crazy or that these things are impossible. She's just... If I can speak for you, you're, uh, what I'm feeling from you is you're saying that your day-to-day -day life is stressful and you'd like your home, you know, to go, uh, you know, kind of block this kind of stuff out because you're kind of overwhelmed. Is well, that, am I hearing yeah, that right? and I don't necessarily want the kids to hear all of that because that also will get give them anxiety and, you know, where's our world going? Am I safe? You know, and that normally always falls on me to to give them that sense of safety it's i mean he he tells them all the time what's going on in those terms and you know it, i think it's scary to kids they don't have a grid like we do as adults so i, I there's just a, i think there's a point where you need to cut it off at some you know for kids especially. Yeah, is there any way that you maybe <clears throat> reach a middle ground? Um, you know, 
to your feelings and to your feelings about this topic and kind of separate from your home? I mean, you know, I want my family to be safe, so I can't necessarily, like, not be prepared in the house. You know, have water, have MREs, have firearms that work, um, you know, survival gear. You know, I mean, these are real things. You know, the kids, you know, they need to learn how to shoot properly. I don't want them to be unsafe. They have to learn um, what equipment to use for survival gear, right? They have to learn to read a map. They have to learn to do these things. So, I mean, to an extent, I'd be willing to work with you on keeping some of the quote-unquote stress out. But for me, this is stress management because the world's lying to us. You know, but I, I, I want the kids to feel safe. Mm -hmm. You want the kids to be safe. They're, I think we're, it's different. For me, they're it the is, same. You agree? Very different. For um, me, they're the same. You're, you want the children to feel safe. He wants the children to be safe. Is there... Uh, you do have the MREs, you do have the firearms um, and ammunition and those things. Do those things make you feel safe? Absolutely. They make me feel safe and prepared. And you feel like you can protect your family? Absolutely. So, Without a shadow of doubt. Is there any way that the actual communication of the coronavirus, um, can you separate that out and just concentrate more on your safety? Okay, I've I have these things in place. I have what's going on in place. My wife and children are, are safe. So could you, you know, not completely get it out of your mind, but could you not share it with like the children or her um, and give them that peace that they need <laughs> to feel the way they feel as long as you've made sure they're safe? I, th I think I'd be open to that. However, um, my wife watches the news. The news just spews lies. So when the kids are in the room and she has a television on, she's watching news, I'm not going to allow that lie to settle in the child's mind and then think that they can trust this news source. So then I feel that I need to come into the situation to protect my family, set everything straight, and give truth and knowledge. Right. There any way that you can, you know, watch the news in a more appropriate place where the children aren't involved? Because that would make the children fearful if they're hearing about. You yeah, know, I guess I didn't deaths. even think about me watching the news and having that. Um, and that's okay because we case. all do that. We're just accustomed to going through our lives. We always watch the ten o'clock news, and you really don't think about it. But when something like this has happened. Every single time the child views it, even though they may be speaking of the same uh, incident, the very same incident, but every single time the child views it, to them, they are being re-traumatized. So for a child to watch the news and stuff, they will feel less safe because the news will go through Twin Towers. It was aired, you know, 200 plus times on Every single time a child seen that, even though it was that same one incident, that child was tra re traumatized every single time. And so, if you're wanting for the, you know, the children to get through this situation that we're all currently going through, maybe you should, you know, make sure that they're not watching that um, on the news. Yeah, that's that's completely up to you. And I'll tone it down too, you know, and. I mean, you you would tone it down too. Yeah, yeah, of course. Like, I mean, I'm their aunt. Like, I want them to obviously feel safe, and I don't want them traumatized by what the news yeah. is spewing yeah. out there. So yeah, of course, I'd support. Right, that. and you know, we're not saying that the news is correct. You know, they may be incorrect. They are incorrect. But you know, it doesn't really matter if it's correct or not if it's hurting hurting your children mm -hmm. or if it's bothering you, you know, or if it's bothering your husband, you know, you're, you can think of your home as more of a, a safe place and the world gets pushed away and gets pushed out and you only let in what you wish to allow in and you are in control of that. 
So is there anything else that you guys would like to talk to me about? And if not, why don't we set up another appointment for next week and we can revisit this. Okay. And you guys can see if all of those little strategies work. Okay. I'd be open to that. That would be good. Yeah. Okay.